We live? Mm -hmm. Awesome. What's up, guys? Happy Saturday. I'm not sure how many are tuning in just yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up the, um, the feed here and take a look at the chat so I can answer questions as we go along. Hope everybody's doing well, staying well, healthy. Oh, got to silence that. Tonight we're going to be making carnitas, uh, pork carnitas, and uh, soft corn tortillas, as well as a roasted salsa verde. So we got a few things to discuss. I got three different things I need to demo for you guys, and we'll probably have all three things working at the same time. Now, with the carnitas, I have already cooked some pork so that we don't have to wait two and a half hours for the pork to cook. So um, I will walk you through the steps on how to um, uh, prepare the pork. And then we'll move on to some other things. And then at the end, I'll pull the cooked pork out and uh, I can show you what that looks like and we'll, we'll taste it. So let's see, we got six watching, awesome. Got the usual suspects in here. Hey, Eddie, Alina, RVA, how's it going? SEC's recipe, awesome, thanks for joining. So while, while we wait for other folks to get uh, into the stream here, into the chat, I'm going to make a cocktail. I'm going to make a margarita, because why not? It is Saturday, right? And we're making carnitas. Also, uh, if you guys are interested in the recipes, I have that information in the description box below the video. Um, there's a, a video for the corn tortillas, a video for uh, my roasted salsa verde, and I left the measurements for the wet rub for the carnitas. So you guys can use that as reference. You can watch the older videos that I produced um, uh, last year on the tortillas and the roasted salsa verde, but I also left the measurements for all the ingredients as well. Um, I think that's it, yeah. There's the housekeeping. Oh, subscribe if you're new and you haven't uh, done that yet. That'd be great, give me a thumbs up. Um, maybe share this on social media to your friends. I'd really appreciate it. The more the merrier in here. Love to uh, spread the good word of food and cooking. But for the margarita, I'm thirsty, so I, uh, I need something to drink. You might hear my cat in the background. She's, she wants something. So if you hear her meow, she's just looking for a treat or something. All right, so this is some mezcal margarita. I mean, mezcal uh, tequila. And I'm going to do one and a half parts of that. A little bit of orange liqueur. It's kind of like a fancy triple sec. And I don't have much left, so I'm just going to use what I have. Normally, I'd fill this up about halfway. That's uh, about a half an ounce. A little bit of agave. I'd say maybe two teaspoons. And the juice of one whole lime. That agave kind of gives it a little sweet note. The lime, obviously, tart. You get smokiness from the mezcal. And, uh, you know, I don't really know exactly what the orange liqueur does. If somebody's a bartender out there watching, please chime in. But it is part of a margarita recipe, so. Right on in. Whoa, we'll spray. Nice. In goes the ice. Oh, and I should mention that my lovely wife is uh, working the camera tonight, so thank you, babe. I appreciate it. I think uh, we, do, we make a great team. The pizza live stream went really, really well. Okay, so I have all my stuff in here. <sighs> Give this a good shake. Hey, Brenda, how's it going? Homemade Express, awesome. Thanks for watching. Creative Captions, Chris, what's happening? He says, nice job, Sarah. <laughs> All right, I got my margarita. Oh, that's wonderful. I'd offer my wife one, but she would say no. 
All right, let's see, we got seven watches still. We're gonna, we're gonna start, man. We're gonna start. I'm gonna talk pork first, all right, because that's what takes the longest here. Um, what I do with this pork now, the measurements that I left down below in the video description call for a four pound piece of pork shoulder. I bought a four pound piece, but what I did was I took two pounds of it and I cooked it already. So I have a two pound piece here. So what you see in the video description for measurements for the wet rub, I'm gonna do half that because I got two pounds. Actually, wait, I want this. What am I doing? Don't throw that away, Tim. Wasting plastic. So, get my ingredients together for the rub. And there's not too many ingredients. Most of them should be household here. You, you probably have them in your pantry. Um, what I have here is, I have some Mexican oregano that I, you'll see there's a lot of stems and stuff in here. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But I just kind of pulverized some uh, Mexican oregano, dry oregano, um, in my mortar and pestle. This is about a half teaspoon, right? What did I say? Yeah, half teaspoon. That's going to go in the bowl. Okay. <laughs> Laura. Hold on one second, guys. Let me tend to my cat. What are you doing? Come here. Go ahead. Oh, animals. Gotta love them. All right. Back to the rub. So we have the oregano, okay? We're gonna add some ancho chili. If you have something in your pantry called chili powder, chances are it is ancho chili pepper. Okay. I'm going to grab a teaspoon of that. So we're going to go a little bigger. Teaspoon. Next up, a little cinnamon. This is Salon cinnamon or canela, as they call it in Mexico. Uh, half teaspoon of that as well. So half teaspoon of oregano, teaspoon of ancho chili powder half teaspoon of cinnamon, and some cumin. You cannot forget the cumin. Half teaspoon of that as well. Okay, so, so far we have some Mexican oregano, some uh, ancho chili powder, some ground cinnamon, some ground cumin, all right, and sea salt. Yeah, there you are. And lime juice. We'll do that. We'll do the garlic and the lime juice last. Let's do three quarters of a teaspoon of fine sea salt. Sometimes I just kind of eyeball this stuff, but I'm showing you guys measurements because I think that that's helpful to y'all. Um, I've cooked this a bunch of times and I kind of just put it all together and it usually comes out really good. But for this demonstration, we are measuring everything, all right? I got two garlic cloves here and I have a lime. So you're gonna use, you're gonna basically take a mandolin, I mean a uh, microplane and pulverize these garlic cloves. Let me put that out of the way for you, babe. You basically turn them into a paste. Thanks, Brenda. Good to see you here. Hugo, how's it going? Thank you. Two Hugos. The cat's cool. <laughs> Thanks. She's old. She's like 15. So she wants us to pick her up and bring her everywhere. She doesn't want to run down the hallway because the younger cat will attack her. We call it the gauntlet. She doesn't want to run the gauntlet. Okay, so I have uh, two cloves of garlic that I pulverized with my microplane, and I'm going to add those to the bowl. I want to take a look at this. Okay. You can discard the pieces, the leftover pieces here. And then our lime juice. Use the whole lime here, okay? Try not to spray like I did last time. I got, I got dusted making that margarita. Rizzy, how's it going? Good to see you again. Thanks for joining in. ZC, howdy. Hope you guys are doing well. 
we're also kind of looking at the chat, so if you guys have questions while I'm rolling here, um, feel free to fire away, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, so I've got all this stuff here. Oh, can't forget my black pepper, so got to go in with the black pepper, too. See, that's about, what, a quarter teaspoon? All right. So this is going to form kind of a wet rub. So it's kind of like a marinade, it's kind of like a dry rub, it's somewhere in between. See that? Okay. And we're going to rub this all over this pork shoulder. I'm going to throw it back in the Ziploc bag. And I would say that you need to let this rest together for at least a couple of hours. Overnight's great, but at least a couple of hours. So I did this this morning, um, right when I woke up, and I'd say the pork rested for six, six, seven hours before I started cooking it, six hours. Um, so yeah, it, it's got some good flavor. Anyways, I'm gonna throw this pork back in the bag. If you don't wanna use plastic, then uh, maybe a bowl, and then just cover that with a cloth or something. But I'm just gonna go right in with my rub. And then just kind of do this. <laughs> Where's the kitty? The kitty cat's in the other room now. I moved her. I picked her up and moved her. That's what she wanted. <laughs> do you guys, I, I grew up, you said that you, you have two cats. We do too, uh, ZC. We have two cats. We have a kitten that's like a, a year and a half old. Uh, maybe, maybe not even a year. About a year, Sarah? Yeah, about a year. Um, named Lemony. And then we have Lara. And Lara is about 15. And Lemony likes to attack her. But um, I grew up with 13 cats. They were all outdoor cats, indoor outdoor cats. So we didn't see them all at once. But yeah, we had a, we had a herd of cats. So a lot of work. OK, so this is going to go in the fridge. You don't have to show that, honey. <laughs> That's gonna go in the fridge. Pretend I'm gonna cook that, okay? Um, but like I said, I already have some cooked off. What I would do to cook that is I would take, I would take a vessel like this, something with a lid or something that you can wrap foil around. I would place the pork in there. Don't rinse it off or anything. Keep all of the rub and everything on the pork. Place it in your vessel. If you have pork fat, Manteca. If you have something like this, you can go to your Latin market. They'll have plenty of this. Um, it's just pork skin fat, rendered fat. I'd recommend picking up a, a quarter of this and have it on hand. It's probably five or six bucks. And you can reuse it. So I would take about half of this container for um, a piece of pork for this recipe, and I would add some of it in there. And that's going to help cook slowly cook the pork. We're kind of making a confit. A confit is is anything that's cooked very, very gently and very low temperature under, under a fat, like an oil of some sort or a, a animal fat. So like duck confit, they'll take duck legs um, and you cook them in duck fat, but you submerge them in duck fat. You cook them at super low temperature for a very long period of time. And that, that creates a very tender piece of meat. So in essence, this fat, having this pork kind of half submerged in the fat is gonna help cook it very gently um, and make it very, very tender. And I'd say halfway through the cooking process, you can turn the, the pork over so that the other half of the pork is now submerged. You don't have to use the entire quart container. I don't think that's necessary for this. But having some pork fat in there is wonderful. And then just when you're done, don't throw it out. Strain it, put it back in the quart container, and you can reuse it a handful of times before it gets maybe uh, too seasoned. Okay? But there you go. Menteca. Use it. So... In here, I'm going to use, this is going to be for tortillas, but I would put the pork in here. I'd put it in my oven. You can see that there's some pork in there, ready for later, already cooked. I'd put this in my oven at about 275 degrees or so, 300 degrees, and I'd cook it slow and low for about three, three and a half hours until it's, you can pull it apart easily with a fork, okay? So our pork is in the oven. Sort of in the oven, right? Okay, that's cooking now. There's a few other things that we need to do. 
we need to make corn tortillas, and we need to make our roasted salsa verde. So I have a, a, um, a pan over here going for tortillas, and I have a cast iron pan over here going for my roasted salsa verde. I'm gonna get, the, get my ingredients for my salsa verde in the pan and in pan roasting right now, and while those are roasting, I'm gonna make the tortilla dough. So we're gonna kinda go back and forth. I'm trying to, trying to have everything going at the same time. I'm not trying to go from one item to the next item to the next item, that just takes forever. So you wanna be juggling around here. You wanna be keeping yourself busy and working all the recipes, all the things at the same time so they all come together at the end and you have your, your dinner, your food. So for the roasted salsa verde, I'm gonna get this pan over medium high heat, okay? And I'm using tomatillos, okay? These are tomatillos. In the supermarket, they're gonna look like, like this. And you don't use this little sleeve on the outside. Take that off, give them a rinse, and uh, you're good to go, okay? But for this recipe, we're gonna use five, five medium tomatillos. And those are gonna go in the pan. The recipe that uh, I have linked on this stream is for, uh, it calls for two serrano peppers, but I'm going to substitute a poblano tonight. Poblanos are definitely, uh, they don't carry as much heat, uh, and my 10 year old's probably gonna have some of this, and my wife will probably want some of it on our tacos, and I don't think they're going to appreciate the, the, the punch of a serrano pepper. So I'm, um, I'm subbing those out for a poblano, very mild pepper, barely any heat at all. So that's gonna go in the pan. I'm also gonna add half of a medium sized yellow onion. You can use a white onion too. And I don't care if these fall apart in the pan. I'm just trying to get some color on them and soften them up a little bit, okay? Also, I need to grab two cloves of garlic I think two cloves. Shoot, I should have looked at the recipe beforehand. Let's do three. <laughs> I didn't even look at the older video to see exactly how many cloves I put in my salsa verde. Oh well. Sometimes you just gotta wing it. Okay, so I'm gonna put those in skin on. That'll kind of protect them a little bit so that the actual, the garlic flesh inside won't burn. Skin on, we're just gonna roast them and then before they go in to get blitzed, we'll take the skins off. All right, so those are just gonna hang out a little bit. And I'll come back and I'll rotate them and try to get color all around them. And it'll soften everything up and then when we're done, when they're done cooking, we're gonna throw them in the blender and blitz them. That'll give us our salsa. Okay? All right here. Got 17 watching. Saturday night. Can you use the same recipe for any other cut of pork? I mean, sure, why not? But um, pork shoulder has a nice ratio of meat to fat. You want some of the fat in the pork shoulder to render out and keep the meat that you're actually gonna eat tender. So if you use something like a pork loin that's very lean, sure, you can cook it slow and low, but if you don't have that intermuscular fat going on in the, like you do in a pork shoulder, you're gonna get dry meat. It's gonna pull and shred, but it's, it's gonna end up becoming dry. So a pork shoulder has a nice ratio and you really want that intermuscular fat when you're doing something like this. A real tough cut typically has that. And that's what a pork shoulder is. This has got to be the cleanest kitchen. Ah, no, no. <laughs> it is not the cleanest kitchen. I have a unique way of hiding things. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, what am I drinking tonight, Rizzy? Ah, this is a mezcal margarita. Got to go with mezcal when you're having a margarita. So, all right. So, um, oh, yeah. No worries about that. Anyways. Mike Braun in the house. How's the pizza dough? Is it resting nicely? Mike's making, making pizza dough, a biga pizza dough tonight. So he's gonna be making pizzas tomorrow. So we were chatting earlier today about it. I'm excited, I wanna see pics, man, I wanna see pics. All right, here we go. And the cat's starting to meow again. 
So we're getting a little color here and there on our ingredients. And if you don't feel comfortable just reaching in the pan like this, then use a pair of tongs or something. So I'm just going to continue to rotate these guys around. They're going to get nice and soft. They're going to catch some color. That's going to help with flavor. Give it a nice roasty note. Let's make our tortilla dough now, OK? I'm using masa harina. This corn is basically soaked in um, lye water. And that adds some, I don't know if you want to call them nutrients. I'm, I'm not a scientist here. But it, basically, soaking them in that helps them helps the, the corn flour become easier for us to digest. So that's why it's done that way. And it also creates a unique flavor. But uh, masa harina, this is not instant. This is, uh, this is not instant. But anyways, I have, uh, I have some already weighed out. That's 175 grams over here. All right. If you want to see what's, what it looks like, OK? And I'm going to make a well in the center. Almost like I'm making bread dough, but there's no gluten in this, so we don't really need to knead it. There's no reason to, to sit there and knead the dough for 10 minutes. It's not going to accomplish anything. We need to add warm water and a little bit of salt. We need to let this, the dough rest so it can hydrate, and then we're good. We can just start making tortillas. So big fat pinch of salt in here, and then a cup of warm water which I'm going to repurpose this bowl for there. Make sure it's warm. You don't want to use cold water. It would be hard to make the, the tortillas with cold water. Warm meal is a little bit of a softer dough. There we go. So I'm going to add 226, 227 grams of water, which is about a cup, about eight ounces. There we go, just rotate some of these guys. You can hear them sizzling. There. There we go. 228, close enough. Whoop, 233, it jumped. Oh well, these might be a little wet. They'll work though. <clears throat> Cares about precision. Anyways, use your hands and just work all the ingredients together, okay? And it's not really even gonna get shaggy, it's just gonna feel wet for a while. And it's pretty, pretty easy to pull pretty much all of the, the masa together here. That's lemons, for Fernando. That's lemons or tomatoes. I'm sorry, man. What are you referring to? Can you give me a little more detail? I'll try to answer your question. Good evening, PDX. How's it going? Good to see you again. OK. So like I said, you don't really need to knead this. I'm just trying to make sure that the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated and I have a homogenous dough here. No dry spots, no wet spots. It feels pretty much even throughout. Okay. And I'm trying to get everything. Yeah, there. Okay. So there's our dough for our tortillas. Corn tortillas, not flour, corn. So masa harina. Water and salt, that is it. I'm going to form it into a ball, OK? I'm going to grab some plastic film. You can also just use a, a damp cloth, but I'm running kind of low on kitchen towels right now. Need to do some laundry. So I'm going to use a little bit of plastic film. This stuff from Aldi is the absolute worst, but it's so inexpensive. That's why. It's cheap, because it's terrible. OK. This is going to rest for at least 10 minutes. Just let the corn flour, the masa harina, hydrate. Just let it sit there and chill. Let it do its thing. OK. Let's come back over here. You got questions popping up? OK. 
okay? I'm rotating these guys, just getting some color on them. Oh God, this smells wonderful. There. Let me wash my hands and I'll answer some questions. Okay, let's see, what do we got? Is a chorused, the corn flour chef? Never used it before. Is it coarse? Is it coarse? Is it coarse flour? Is that what you're asking, Rizzy? It's pretty finely ground. Um, I would say it's more finely ground than a fine semolina. It's pretty fine. Um, but yeah, masa harina, not the instant. The instant is actually, uh, it's pre-cooked and then dried and blitzed. This is soaked and then dried and blitzed. It's not cooked. Shouldn't you use boiled water instead of warm water for the spring water, considering bacteria in warm water? I never have an issue. I'm still alive. We use tap water all the time. Um, plus, this here is going to get cooked. We're not eating it like this. I'm going to form tortillas, and I'm going to griddle them, and they'll be fully cooked before I eat them. So if there's any concern of bacteria from, from water that I've used, warm water that I used out the tap, that'll be eliminated immediately when I cook the tortillas. All right? But yeah, we use... Warm tap water, cold tap water. And this is in the States. I don't know where you live, but um, where I live, the water's perfectly fine. Hi, Chef. How does masa binds together? Does it crumble? Yeah, there's, so there's no gluten in masa. This is a corn flour um, of sorts. Uh, and yeah, so it would crumble. It, it will. It doesn't have any, there's no integrity in this, in this dough at all. There's no gluten to give it structure. So... It's not like you can bake bread with this. I'll show you. When we go through the tortilla press, pressing process and I make them, you'll see they hold together pretty well when making tortillas, but you can't bake a loaf of bread or anything with this. You'd need gluten for that. Let's see, in the frying pan. Oh, okay, so these are tomatillos, Fernando. Tomatillos. Think of it as like a, they're almost like green tomatoes, honestly. They're very, very close to that. I, I don't even know if they're, in, I don't know if they're in the same family, but. They're absolutely delicious. They have a nice tart flavor. And um, I don't know the history of tomatillos, honestly. I, I really don't. But um, I use them in my, my salsa verde all the time. So I'm going to pull the garlic cloves, take them out of the pan. I don't want those to burn. Burnt garlic's terrible. But the, the skins on the, um, on the garlic that we left on are protecting the inside, which is nice. So yeah, now the onions are going to continue to get some color. This poblano needs a little bit more color. And these tomatillos need to soften up a little bit. God, it smells so good. They don't want to stay on their sides. They want to go top or bottom. So that's just going to be the way they are. Leave them like that. All right, let those go a little bit longer. We got our tortilla. We can start pressing those in a minute. Make sure that my griddle is at the right temp. So what I'm doing here, if you guys have a griddle, definitely use it to make tortillas. I'm staging the heat, okay? The back part of the griddle is hot, but it's not overwhelmingly hot. It's not blazing hot. Wow, it's... Turn the fan on, maybe? <laughs> it's not blazing hot. It's just hot. The front is blazing hot. So when I make the tortillas, I'm going to move the tortilla from the back to the front in a series of, of turns, okay? It's not that difficult, but the back kind of helps set the tortilla, and then I move the tortilla to the front, and it cooks and finishes the tortilla. If I were to just throw the tortilla on this part right here that's super, super hot, they like to stick. So by putting it on the back part of the, of the griddle that's not as hot, I'm kind of setting it, and I'm not going to allow it to stick when I flip it onto the really, really, really hot part, okay? Okay, let's see. I need a bowl. We'll get the garlic in here. We'll get it all in here. I'm just going to put it all in here. How about that? Nope, dry pan. This is a dry cast iron pan. You don't need any oil. Basically, I don't know. I guess it's considered dry, like dry roasting. I don't know. Um, I think if I were to put oil in here, because it's so hot, it would just smoke and smoke. I mean, you'd, I'd get a lot of smoke in my kitchen. I already have quite a bit of, quite a bit, yeah. Well, usually run the fan, it's too loud. So um, 
Yeah, if you put oil in there, it'd just smoke, you'd have a ton of smoke. Yeah. What I'm going to be using to blitz my, uh, my Salsa Verde Vitamix, but you could use a food processor. The video that I have on my channel on how to make Rosa Salsa Verde, I did it while I was camping. So uh, I didn't have anything like this on hand because I was camping in the woods. So I cut everything by hand. And so you can do that too. It just comes out a little bit more chunky and that's, that's perfectly fine. Oh, you want to share? Uh, if you guys end up taking a photo, if you try this recipe and you take a photo of it and you want to share it with me, I would um, put it on Instagram and tag at kitchencraftfood. That's my Instagram handle. Um, I, you know, love to see that. I've had a few people tag me recently, and it was kind of fun to fun to see it on Instagram. Also, if you are new here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, okay, camera holder, can you go deeper, please? <laughs> so I have uh, what's left in the pan here. I'm going to turn the heat off now. Tomatillos and a poblano pepper. And I'm just giving them a dry roast. I'm giving them some color, which is going to help with the flavor of the salsa. It's not going to be a raw salsa. Um, and it's softening, softening all of this stuff up so that it'll, it'll blitz easily. So in here I have uh, some yellow onion and some garlic right here. We're also going to add some cilantro and a little bit of salt as well and some lime juice. So cilantro. And a sip of margarita. Someone's asking about the spiciness. Spiciness. Is poblano spicy like jalapeno? No, it is not. It's a very mild pepper. Um, the recipe that I typically make calls for serrano peppers, which are about on the same level as like a good jalapeno, I would say. I don't know where it is on the Scoville scale, but uh, Scoville scale. But uh, I kind of liken serranos to jalapenos in heat. Maybe the serranos might be a hair spicier. But um, tonight I'm going to use a poblano because there are other folks that are eating the salsa that do not like heat like a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right, here we go. This is going to come out. We're going to let... Uh... Don't do this at home, boys and girls. You could roast them in the oven if you want to. So what I would recommend is I would start them in the pan, a hot cast iron pan or a hot pan of some sort, start to get some color on them. And then if you want to use your oven, throw them in like a, a 400, 425 degree oven. But uh, the real magic happens in the cast iron and getting them, giving them some color, okay? So we're gonna let those rest for a minute. And while they're resting, we're gonna make the soft corn tortillas and then we'll come back and we'll make our salsa. How about that? Sound good? All right. The nightshade family, like eggplants, peppers, not tomatoes at all. By the way, just Google it. Thank you. Thank you very much, ZC Dell. I appreciate that. So yeah, I don't know everything, man. I don't know everything. Don't claim to, never have. Okay, so I would recommend keeping your dough. Oh, see, it feels softer. It feels like Play-Doh, honestly. It actually might even be a hair dry. See, when I push on it, it's starting to split a little bit. I could have used a hair more water, and that comes down to your climate, like what it's like in your house. Is it humid? Is it dry? Right now it's kind of dry. It was a very cool day outside, low humidity. It's, it's very dry in the house. So I could have added a little bit more water to make up for that. We'll be fine, we'll be perfectly fine. But um, yeah, you honestly, when you, when you kind of press on this, you don't want to see a lot of cracking. And there's a little bit going on, see that? 
Um, but we'll be good. It's fine. Not optimum, but just fine. So this should make about, uh, what was this recipe? I don't know, 10, I think? I don't know, they're 40 ounces each. All right, 40, 40 ounces, 40 grams. So that's 45 grams. I always overshoot by like three to five grams. 41, good enough, close enough. Keep this wrapped up so it doesn't dry out. I don't roll all of these out at once um, just because they'll dry, they'll dry out. So grab some of the, the dough and just roll it into something that resembles like a golf ball. It's about the size you want. Something that's a little smaller than a golf ball. Chris, you'll appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, add water to it if it's a little dry. Um, I guess you could go back in and add water, but we're, we're all right. We're fine. It's close enough. So I'm going to put this in here. This is a tortilla press. You don't have to use one of these. If you, you don't have to go out and buy one just to make fresh tortillas. I'll show you in a second that you can do it without one, but um, I, I wanted one. I wanted another toy, so I went out and I bought one. Um, and they're cheap. This was like maybe 10 bucks, 12 bucks. And what I did here is I took a quart-sized uh, freezer bag and I just cut it out so there's two, I just used the sides. I have two pieces here. That'll keep the tortilla from sticking to the tortilla press. And I kind of have to offset, like off-center this to get it the right shape. So I'm just going to put this down, fold this over, and give it a press. And then I just move it around a few times. A lot of people don't do this, but wow, that didn't come out very good, did it? <laughs> it's not circular. Wow. Oh, well. It'll be delicious. Come on over here. So I'm going to go with the back. All right. I'm going to let that go for about 10 seconds. Just to let it set. And then I'm going to move it. I'm going to flip it over to this hot side over here. See, it's sticking. It is sticking. Oh, of course, my demo. Come here. Bummer, dude. So I burn a pizza on Thursday, on Wednesday, and now I screwed up a tortilla. Oh, who am I to be showing you guys how to cook? Let's try that again, shall we? Forty-four. Try that again. OK. Ah, oh, that's, now that's the right shape right there. There we go. That's much better. See how it just peels right off? OK. Let that chill for about 10 seconds. Make sure everything is hot. Oh yeah, it's hot all right, see that? Okay, here we go. Now, when we flip it, we're going to let it cook for about 30 seconds on the really hot, and then we're going to flip it one more time and let it cook for another 30, and we'll be done. <laughs> Just goes to show you that when you go live, mistakes happen. So that first one was a major error. Don't blame myself. Thank you. <laughs> I like the mistakes. Yeah, that's true. It's true. It's never perfect. It never goes exactly as planned, trust me. It never does. Okay, we're getting some color underneath. So after about 30 seconds, you're going to start to see some blistering underneath the tortilla. See that right there? Okay. We're going to flip it over. And sometimes when you give it a tap, 
it puffs up. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. I can't get it every time. Oh, uh, you can see it rise a little bit. Sometimes they puff up about this high. That's great because, see, it is puffing up a little bit. If you get down kind of, you can see it puffing a little bit. That humidity in there is going to help finish off the inside of the tortilla. All that steam. Okay, so see that? We're good. This is going to go in here. And I'm going to put the lid back on. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep making a tortilla. Let's make a few more. And then I'll go back over to the salsa verde. How about that? Shouldn't you press it so it puffs up? I just tried. Yeah, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's You're really kind of at the mercy of the tortilla with the, with the puffing thing. I've read that sometimes it has to do with, um, with the amount of moisture in the dough. And since this is a little less moist than, than uh, I kind of want, or I should have, should have, uh, I should have added a little bit more water, um, it may not puff up. But we'll see. I'll give it another few tries. Rustic Mexican style. Yes, Hugo. Okay. Here we go. Let's do this again. Press. Nice. Let's go here. Okay. On the tortilla. Give that ten seconds. And then we'll flip it. Yep. Wants to stick a little bit. There we go. So 30 seconds on the second flip. And then I'll flip it again for 30 seconds and we'll tap it and see if it puffs up. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I don't make tortillas every day, so I'm not a master tortilla maker, but I make pretty decent ones. Let's take a look. Is there some blistering? Yep, there's some blistering going on down there. Okay. Flip it. Give it a pop. Oh, there it goes. Come on. Over here. <laughs> it's like, there we go. There it puffing. It's puffing now. So that steam inside is supposed to help with the texture of the tortilla. If you can't get it to do it, it's really no big deal. Oh, I got a Rizzy, man, you're on a roll. Thank you so much, man. Never mind mistakes. <laughs> Learned a bunch, Jeff, man. Love it. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the super chat. Okay, this one is going in. You guys want to see one more? Or you want me to go over to the Salsa Verde now? Hit me up quick on the chat. Where'd you get the spatula? Where'd I get the spat? Um, this is a, a Amco spatula. I don't know where I got this, honestly. I've had the spatula for... Oh Lord, probably 15 years. So I don't really know where it came from, honestly. My mother used to work at Williams Sonoma. Um, so I used to get a lot of gifts because she got a discount and then when things were on sale, she just kind of bought everything. So yeah, this might've come from Williams Sonoma. I'm not sure. Oh, okay, gotcha, one without the press. Thank you for reminding me. All right. So, if you don't have a tortilla press, just use a pan, all right? And I'll show you how that works. 40 grams, which is way over, 51. And that's under. 
38. 40 grams. 39, 40. He keeps going back and forth. Yes, can you cook one without the press? Yes, no press. Gotcha. So it just requires a little leverage, that's all. Let's move my cutting board. So you still need one of these. You still need your, your Ziploc bags because the tortilla will stick to anything if you don't have this. Okay. So on top. And now I'm just going to put the pan right over the top and I'm going to press down like this. And you get a tortilla. You have to do this a few times. But you kind of get the idea, right? Yeah. One more time. There. So that's without the press. Just like that. And then we'll go over and we'll just lay it on here. Give it the 10 seconds that we need. SV, please. Gusto 24, I'm not sure what you mean. Salsa Verde, SV, is that what you're saying? Couple more seconds here. That's from the one that I messed up. So we'll give it 30, then we'll flip it, and then we'll press it and cross our fingers that it puffs up. Twenty-four watching. Cool. Needs a little bit more time. Okay. Flip. Come on, it's like it wanted to. Oh, denied. It started to puff. There's a little bit of air. Yeah, there's a little bit. It just didn't want to do it that time. Oh, well. We got a little bit. Okay. See, bottom. Going in. Okay, so I have three. You've seen it. If you have questions, fire them away on the tortillas. I'm going to move over to the roasted salsa verde. And then when we're done with the salsa verde, I'll show you what the carnitas look like, and we'll build a taco. Okay, so we have all of this stuff here, and I need a cutting board. And we're going to come back over here, because I need to cut some stuff up, de-seed some things. So this is like a, this is a nice little mini cutting board that my wife gave me a set of these for Christmas. Um, because I have all of these giant cutting boards, and they're really annoying to work with, with them when I'm just making small batches of stuff. So these are very, very helpful. A good little tip here is to wet a, piece, a paper towel and then just add it underneath. It'll keep the cutting board from slipping around on you. little tip. Like in commercial kitchens at restaurants, we would use a, like a prep towel because we have much larger cutting boards. We put a pre wet prep towel underneath and put the cutting board down keeps it from slipping around. Okay, so we have some work to do here. We have to de-seed this poblano. So I just kinda, there's a million ways to cut a pepper open, honestly. I usually just do that. And then, you don't need to take the skin off this, all right? You don't need to do that for the salsa. Not necessary. Like that. Get every last bit, right? Like 
that, that, and then if you really want to, you can cut these little bits out too. Not many seeds in that pepper. That was weird. So we can all go in there. We don't need to do anything with the tomatillos, but we need our garlic. Got to take the skin off the garlic. And I'm just going to cut the ends, this piece here, off. Thank you, Tips. You're very welcome. Yep, salt, <laughs> Gusto24, yep. I'm doing it now, man. I got you. Just cut these little pieces off. You can just discard or compost this stuff here if you want. So here's the bulk of our ingredients. We need uh, lime juice and some salt as well, but and some cilantro. So if you don't have a blender, again, a food processor works, or just use a knife. Um, for those that weren't here earlier, when I was uh, when I shot the video on how to make this, uh, there is a video on my channel on how to make this, I was camping, so I didn't have a food processor or a uh, blender or anything like that. I just used a knife and made a, a nice rustic salsa verde. But since I have my Vitamix here, I'm in my own kitchen, I'm going to use it. So just drop tomatillos in. Basically just drop everything in here. All in one shot. Cilantro, I'm just going to Pull a bunch of it, stem and everything, honestly. It's about a half a bunch, I'd say. That's good. Maybe that big stem comes out. Okay. And then we're going to juice uh, a lime or two in there. Maybe a hit of agave as well. Coming over with some lime. And if it's too thick, or it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have enough salt, or maybe it needs a little more lime, you can adjust that and then just kind of pulse the machine to incorporate the new ingredients in there. Um, you can kind of fine tune this salsa, or you can just dump it out into a bowl and, and tweak the, the flavor that way too, just by adding ingredients and stirring. There we go. Juice of two limes. Over there. Can you replace the cilantro? Can you replace the cilantro? Ah. I don't know that I would replace it with anything. I would just omit it. That's what I would do. But the I know some people have an aversion to the flavor of cilantro. I get it. My best friend does too. Um, thinks it tastes like soap. But when I make stuff with cilantro in it and it's, it's incorporated with other ingredients. You know, it's just one component of many. It doesn't bug him at all. Gorav, thank you so much. <laughs> you just saved me 10 bucks on press. <laughs> cool, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Okay, so we have everything here. We need a little agave, and we need our salt. Back over to the machine. I'm just going to eyeball this. I'd say it's about a tablespoon. Fat pinch of salt. I'll adjust that if I need to afterward. So we're going to start on low. I don't want to liquefy this, all right? I just want to break it down a little. Go a little bit longer, up the speed a teeny bit. Yeah. 
Grab a spoon, give it a taste. That's good. Perfect. Perfect. Don't need to add a single thing. Okay. So, we have our salsa, we have our tortillas, we need our carnitas. I'll be making more of these later so we can have a full dinner. But for you guys, you got, we got three tortillas. I wish one of you guys were here to help me eat the tacos. There's one for me, one for my wife, and my son's in the other room playing video games, so. <laughs> See, any other questions we got? Thank you very much. Nope. Fire away questions, guys, if you want to. Happy to answer. So, this isn't hot, by the way. This is, it's warm, so I can grab it with, <laughs> without two towels. And I'm going to pour this in here. And I will come back with a spatula later, but yeah, there you go. Roasted salsa verde. Really, really, really easy. So easy to make. Ridiculous. So the carnitas. This is what the carnitas will look like when they're done cooking. Okay. Plenty of pork fat in there. Almost, I would say, three-quarters submerged, maybe two-thirds. But um, super tender. Look, just, I can just pull it apart. I mean, it's just fantastic. Mm. Mm, it's so good. So good. All right. So what we need to do now... This is cooled off so I can handle it. I'm gonna take the carnitas, I'm gonna put them into something and I'm gonna shred them. Discard all of the fat that you don't necessarily wanna be biting into. So I'll separate the fat from the meat, discard the fat, keep the meat, and then we'll build a taco. There's one more step that you can take that I typically do with carnitas that I think is fairly traditional and I'll show you in a second, but let's get the meat shredded first, shall we? And again, this... Uh, the Verde will last probably a week, I would say. There's nothing in it other than a little bit of salt and agave. There's nothing in it to like preserve it, I would say. Um, there's no vinegars. It's not heavy on sugar or heavy on salt. So it's a perishable item. Um, I would say a week in the fridge and, and toss it. But you should, if you plan ahead and you plan your meals, um, you could kill this pretty easily, especially if you, you go big on it. Or you could just half the recipe and make about a cup with a half recipe and you know you have less to potentially lose if you don't go through it all. Okay. So let me uh, get rid of the scraps here. And we'll move. Yeah. <laughs> That is a tricky question. I was an executive chef for uh, over a decade. Uh, worked in the industry for about 15 years. And about three years ago, I decided to, um, decided to leave the industry because the hours were crazy and just wasn't having fun anymore. And I had a family and I missed them. And you know, I, I just wasn't seeing my, my wife or my son. Um, I feel like I missed the entire first year of my child's life working in restaurants and um, yeah so the hours just got it got overwhelming and I just was done with it so I left the industry and I went back to what I went to college for which was graphic design and becoming a web designer and now I cook for my family and my friends and for all of you guys on YouTube so I guess now I'm a hobbyist 
but I was a professional beforehand. Professional turned hobbyist. I really got to give credit to all the folks that are still in the industry. It is brutal. The hours are brutal. You really, really got to love what you do in order to stay in it. It's not an easy job, especially now. I mean, people are struggling. It's, it's rough. So hats off to all you guys that are still working in restaurants and food service in general. It's, it's not an easy gig. Everything looks delicious. Thanks for sharing with us. You're very welcome. Brenda Kerr. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. I know you speak from experience. Yeah, so a lot of my... So what I'm thinking about doing... Um, see, this is all fat right here. I, I don't want... I do not want to eat this, okay? <laughs> Does that look appetizing? No. So we're going to chuck this, okay? It's going to go off to the side, and it's going to go in the trash. So what I was thinking of doing... Um, maybe in the next week or so, was doing another live stream, but um, for any, any of the super chats that I get, those would be donated to a local um, food service charity. I believe there's one in town called the Ris Richmond Restaurant Coalition that formed because of the COVID situation. And um, I'd love to do some fundraising for them. So I'm thinking maybe next week, uh, once I have a chance to reach out to some of my industry friends and uh, talk to whoever is running the, the, the charity, um, if I can get things, all my ducks in a row, I'll do a couple live streams and any super chats that are donated during those live streams will go straight 100% to the charity. So keep that in mind, guys. If you're in Richmond or anywhere else for that matter and you want to donate to the food service industry who's really taking a hard hit right now, uh, come to those live streams and, and donate if you can. It'd be huge. Okay, so I pulled some of this here and I'm going to go through the other one here. And I'm, I'm just finding the meat with my fingers. Just kind of pushing through all of it. Delicious. Thank you, Anna. Yep, no fat. That's pretty lean cut right there. There we go. You'll see that there's like dark meat. There's there's some, some light meat in here. The shoulders... Uh, Pretty flavorful cut. You kind of get the best of everything with this. This cut. What do you guys think so far? Is this, uh, are you learning something here? Would you guys want to see sort of an abridged version of a carnitas uh, taco recipe on my channel? Should I go through and actually shoot one and edit it and put it on there or would this suffice? You know, these live streams are longer, so um, if you want to just cut right to the chase, you know, the shorter videos sometimes work better, but um, I always appreciate when you guys watch the live streams. So there. Lots of shredded pork, and it tastes absolutely delicious. So with this, you see all this fat in here? See that? Strain that out and save it. Do not throw this away. This is so good. This is so yummy. And you can use it for other things, too. You can use it like you would a cooking oil or, um, or even butter. You know, you could use it to cook an omelet with. It has a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor in there right now. Let me wash my hands. And um, I'll show you this final additional step, which involves using some of that fat. Let me just clean up a second here and get some stuff out of the way. Brazing. Question about brazing. Uh, yeah, trust me, the hours are crazy. Being a chef myself, it's nuts. I'm trying to do some volunteering work here in the UK. Yeah, man, hats off. It, it's not easy. It isn't. Um, yeah, man. I feel you. <laughs> My heart goes out to you guys. It's a rough time. Can you use chicken beef instead of pork? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, I think that the braising time might be different, especially with chicken because it's a leaner cut. Um, and it really depends on what cut of beef you're using. I would probably go with a chuck roast um, if you're going to be doing tacos like this or, or boneless short ribs maybe. Um, a chuck roast would probably be the most economical cut for something like this, and it'll still come out fantastic. In fact, I have a barbacoa video on my channel. Not to sit here and show my own videos, but I have 
a barbacoa video that you should watch that uses a chuck roast. Um, so it's a very similar preparation, uh, a few different ingredients, but um, pretty similar. I would go check that out. Uh, let's see, where is the braising question? Was that it? Did I answer it? No. Quite inspiring. Did you ever brown the pork before bra or after braising? Uh, that's, <laughs> I'm getting to that, Brenda. Was that the braising question? Okay. Let me throw this out too. Always keep a clean station, huh? Okay. So, I'm going to move this out of the way like that. I have a, a pan, it could be any pan. This is a cheap nonstick pan that I'm using right now. I'm going to preheat this. This is that extra step I was telling you about. So you can choose to do this, or you can skip the step and go straight to taco building. But I think this adds a nice crunch, a nice textural element into the taco, and I think it's very, fairly traditional. So I'm going to take some of my meat. I'm going to let this pan get hot, but I'm going to use some of this pork fat, and I'm going to fry some carnitas meat before I put it to the taco. So little fat goes in, pan gets hot, the meat goes in. I'm going to fry, get nice and crispy, and then I'll build my taco with that. Sound good? Okay. Give it a second for the pan to get hot. If you have a question, now's a great time. Um, oh, and one thing I didn't add earlier, this bay leaf, totally optional, but I typically throw one in into the carnitas before it goes in the oven. Um, yeah. So I will strain this out. I'm going to add this back into the quart container that it originally came in. I'm going to throw it in the fridge, and I'm going to hold it for when I feel like I need it again. We're not quite there yet. Do you have anything here? Yes. <laughs> I wish you guys could try some of this. Honey, you want a piece? There you go. Got to feed the missus. Be a terrible husband if I didn't offer any, right? We're going to crush this later. Some of this will be left. I don't think we'll be able to eat all of this tonight. <laughs> so there'll probably be seconds. And tomorrow, I could even throw this into an omelet. Um, can make a breakfast burrito with it, you know? There are options here, options. Make a sandwich with it, be delicious. Throw it in a quesadilla. Anyways, I, um, it just, it's, just, it's an aromatic. It just adds another layer of flavor. Um, yeah, you know, when you think of it as like um, adding peppercorns or uh, parsley stems to a stock, it just adds, it helps to build some flavor. Okay, so. I'm being careful here not to grab any liquid out of this. I'm just grabbing the fat that's on the surface because I haven't strained this out yet. There's juices from the meat down below, which are actually fantastic as well. So I'm just going to add some of this, some fat. I don't know. That's probably a tablespoon and a half is a teaspoon. So yeah, that's good. Someone's making a pizza recipe. Nice. The one from uh, the uni video, the live stream, or the, um, yeah? Awesome. You're making it right now, or you made it, or? Fermenting that. Nice. I'd love to hear how it turns out. Tag me on Instagram, Kitchen Craft Food. Show me a photo of it. So I'm just going to do a enough carnitas for, uh, I don't know, that's probably two tacos. I need, a, I need a rubber spatula. Non-stick pan, can't use metal. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this sizzle for a minute. Let it catch some, uh, some color, let it crisp up. You can see, see that right there? 
getting nice and crispy. Yeah. This is a really cool final step. Again, you don't have to do this, but I, I love it. If you want to kind of avoid that extra hit of fat, fine with me. But this definitely just kind of levels up the taco a little bit. Okay, I think we're good. We just want some crispiness. We don't want to get the whole, everything. We still want some, some tenderness from the braised shoulder, but we want a little crispy from the fry. Okay. Got a taco. Ooh, almost forgot one ingredient here. Hold on one second. I have a little bit of queso fresco that I want to put on here. This is a nice little addition because, you know, you have a nice sort of tangy, slightly hot, slightly spicy, um, you know, roasty hit from the salsa. But, and then you have this very rich flavor from the pork. But you want to have like a creamy, maybe dairy hit from some sort of cheese. Queso fresco is a great option. You could also add maybe some cotija if you want something a little saltier, maybe a little drier. This is semi-soft cheese. You could also go with a, with a basic, you know, um, shredded cheese, you know, like get a block of, of, you know, Monterey Jack or something if you really wanted to go that route. But I'd recommend staying with like queso fresco or cotija or, you know, something along that lines. It's, it adds a nice element of flavor to the, uh, to the taco. So let me grab a little bit of this. This is probably ridiculously hot. Like that. Yeah, save that for another taco. Let's bring this over here. Keep it simple with our tacos. A little salsa verde. A little queso fresco. And if you wanted to, you could do some chopped onion on here. Um, if I do that, I'd usually use like a red onion, just some chop them. You could use pickled red onions too. It's a nice little hit of acidity, kind of in place of the salsa, or uh, even some fresh cilantro leaves. But this is, this is good for me. I'm happy. I'm very happy with this. So let me take a nice big bite. Hope I don't burn my face off. Mmm. That was good. Mm. What I like the most about all of this was a nice subtle hint of cinnamon. That's the best part about all of it right here. The cinnamon gets me every time. Not overwhelming, just very subtle. And it goes great with the pork. <laughs> all the fat's dripping out the back end. <laughs> Hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna save the rest of that for later. Do you guys have any questions? Let's see. We've been going now for what 73 minutes for a while. So happy to take a few questions if you got them. And we'll do about maybe five minutes, and then um, my family and I are gonna eat some dinner. Anybody? Google. Yeah. Very, very tasty. All of the ingredients and the measurements are down below. So um, in the video description box, right below the video. I think in the YouTube app, you gotta hit the arrow. There's a little arrow just below the video and that'll bring down all of that information. If you're on a television, I don't know. I can't help you there. We don't really watch a lot of YouTube on our TV. But um, like I said, the Salsa Verde, the corn tortillas and the ingredients for the wet rub for the um, carnitas are all down below. And there's videos for the salsa verde and the flour, the corn, or the corn tortillas. Man, Rizzy, you're, dude, you are so generous. 
Tim, our family owns a restaurant in Mexico. It looks amazing. Oh, thanks, man. Love you, dude. You're awesome. Super, so appreciative. Thank you so much, man. Um, please save this video. Yes, I will. I save all the live streams, so you can rewatch it if you want to. Um, I do plan on making, again, a, an abridged video, just a shortened video, um, an edited version, so you don't have to watch an hour and a half to get the, you know, the gist of the recipe. Also, I have a cinnamon rolls video coming out tomorrow. So if you hit that bell, the notification bell on my, on my main landing page, um, it'll let you know when I upload that video and make it public. So a couple things you should do here. You should subscribe. You should give me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. <laughs> um, maybe leave me a comment and hit the notification bell. Any interaction with my channel is a lot of support. So um, the more interaction I can get, the more YouTube likes it, and the more YouTube will surface my videos and they'll share them with more people. And, you know, um, I'm doing this for fun, but I'm also doing it because I want to grow my channel and I have some goals. So uh, if you guys could help me with those, and you guys are the ones that are kind of, you're kind of driving the bus on that for me. You're the ones that are coming to my channel and watching my videos and leaving comments. Um, I would appreciate the support. It's super helpful. Thanks, Rizzy. Does any, do anybody, any questions? I'll leave it open for two minutes and then we're gonna, we're gonna head out and eat some carnitas and have another margarita. <laughs> Are you planning more live videos? Uh, Grub, yes, I am. Um, I think I've done, what, four or five videos, honey? What, four or five live videos in the last two, two and a half weeks? So, um, you know, while our, our shelter in place is going on and, and we're all working from home and, and um, you know, we're all in, in, in social distancing, I've had a little bit more time at night to do this and I've been cooking a lot more. So uh, the opportunities are there. When we go back to normalcy, hopefully sooner than later, uh, I will continue to do the live streams, but I probably won't do two or three a week. I'll do a video. I'll try to do a video at least every other week every week if I can, and then at least one live stream a week. So uh, those aren't going away. They'll be here. You guys have any suggestions on what you might want to see uh, me cook live? You got any recipes that you might want me to try out for you? Uh, keep in mind that I, I need to be able to do that within a certain period of time. I can prep stuff ahead of time, but it's always nice. It's always nice when you have your raw ingredients and you, go, you can go entirely from raw to a finished product in one shoot. Um, so if you have some recommendations, that'd be great. Same, we have more time to watch uh, than ever before. It's snowing in Colorado. Oh, really? Where are you in Colorado? Are you like in the Boulder area or Denver? Where are you? We haven't been out there in a while. Um, my wife used to have friends that lived out in Boulder, but they moved to Burlington, Vermont. So there's no reason to visit anymore. Can you save your live stream to your channel? Yes, Brenda, I will. Yeah, all my live streams are there. I don't know how they display or if they display differently than my, um, my edited videos, but they should all be accessible on my channel. I did a pizza one on Thursday, and uh, there's one on au gratin potatoes, and I did a, um, a spiral ham, but th that, was, that one was okay. I think that was my first one. <laughs> then I did an omelet one, which went all right as well, but since Sarah, my lovely wife, has been manning the camera, uh, the shoots have gone better. I feel like we're doing a lot better going live with, with somebody handling the camera. You work in Boulder? Right on. Well, you know what? I love, man, I'm from New England. I love snow. I am ready for spring, but I kind of missed the whole snow thing here in Richmond. We didn't really get anything. So hopefully you get the snow, you can enjoy it, it goes away quickly, and then spring is right around the corner, right? Can you include time and temp you cooked pork at in drop down? Yes, Jeff, I will. I will do that, definitely. Um, just for the record, uh, I cooked it in my oven at uh, 300 degrees uh, for about three hours. These were smaller cuts, two pound. A four pound cut, if you don't break it down into smaller pieces, might take a little longer. But if you maybe take that four pound piece and cut it into two, it might take you about three hours. I'd love to see you do your ratatouille. Oh, okay. I can do that. That's a good idea. We got some, uh, yeah. The seasons are coming along here. I could probably 
if the farmers markets start up again, um, if there's an opportunity for that, I can go pick up some local produce too. It'd be even even better. Okay, guys. Um, I think that's going to do it. We've been going for almost 80 minutes now. I hope you learned something here. Thank you for watching. Again, subscribe if you haven't already. Share this. Uh, tell people about Kitchen and Craft, um, that fact that I go live and I post other videos. And uh, I really, really, really appreciate the support. Rizzy, thanks again for the super chats. Um, Gaurav, thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate that as well. Uh, hope to see you guys again. Hope to see everybody again in the next stream. And have a great Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. I'll catch you later.